Hi, I'm Wes Hartiger from the DNSSEC Tools Project. Today I'm going to show you a demonstration of one of our tools that is useful for generating a graphical representation of the domain name system, or DNS. This is a highly helpful visualization tool that is especially useful when debugging and analyzing the deployment of the secure version of DNS, known as DNSSEC. It does this by allowing you to perform DNS queries directly and by analyzing log files from the DNSSEC tool's libval library and binds popular DNS server. This is DNSSEC nodes. By default, it shows only a single starting node in the middle of the screen, representing the DNS root. We can use the tools at the bottom of the window to zoom in on the display diagram as well as perform lookups. We'll start by using the tool to perform a simple DNS query for www.dnssec-tools.org. The resulting diagram shows one circle for every node found in the resulting lookup. We can change the query type as well and easily search for other records, such as an IPv6 Quad A record. Clicking on any node will display its name near the top of the window and allow you to examine additional information remembered about that domain name. A shortcut to the Details dialog box can be taken by right-clicking on the node as well. In the Details dialog box, you'll find a listing of all the DNS record types seen for a given node along with the status of those record types. In this case, we note that there is an A record which has been validated, and two records, a Quad A record and a DS record, which do not exist and have been validated to do not exist. In other words, they have been proven to not exist. If we add in more data to the tree, DNSSEC nodes will separate the data into a circular tree pattern. For example, let's add some other DNS lookups. First, let's reset the type to an A record, and then we'll look up dnssecdeployment.org, our sister site. Next, let's look up good-a.test.dnssectools.org, which is a validatable node in our test site. We also have an unvalidatable node called badsign-a.test.dnssectools.org, which will add a red node indicating that there's a problem with that node. And in fact, it shows us that DNSSEC failed for that A record. If we add other nodes away from the .org realm, like www.google.com, we'll see that other nodes branch out from the root node in the middle. DNSSEC nodes will also diagram the results in a tree-like layout, although this quickly becomes unwieldy for larger data sets. Finally, under the File menu, you'll find a Clear Nodes option. This resets DNSSEC nodes back to its original starting state with just the root node showing again. Now let's have some fun and I'll show you the real power of DNSSEC nodes. First, let's start by telling DNSSEC nodes to watch a log file for any new incoming data and display the results. As I mentioned earlier, you can watch either a libval or bind named log file. Our next release will include support for the unbound server as well. Now that DNSSEC nodes is watching that log file, I can instruct my DNSSEC instrumented Firefox to go load the DNSSEC tools web page, and we'll see the graph automatically updated to reflect the DNS lookups that were needed to load the web page. As you can see, it actually took a fair number of DNS lookups in order to pull all the information needed to load the web page. And we can go load other web pages too, like the dnssecdeployment.org web page. And you can see that additional bubbles will be added to the graph. As sites increase in complexity, such as the cnn.com website, the bubbles get rather expansive as more and more JavaScript and cascading style sheets are incorporated into the application. 
you can see that even though the main page is loaded visually for the user, that there are still many requests happening in the background and more and more bubbles are getting expanded upon. As you can see, there are many colors shown on the nodes that depict the status of the data. Fortunately, the Help menu will provide you with a quick legend. DNSSEC nodes provides a number of filtering mechanisms as well that will help you quickly identify and examine the nodes that are of the highest interest to you. For example, if we apply the data status filter, we can quickly highlight the nodes with the DNSSEC status results that we're most interested in. The default highlights any nodes that have failed validation. This immediately brings to your attention the DNS nodes that are important failure cases. Note that the two nodes with red components, which signal DNSSEC failure conditions, are now brought prominently into view. Right-clicking on them will allow you to examine the log messages and quickly isolate the root of the problem. You can also filter on other status results as well. For example, you can quickly highlight all the nodes that contain validated data. You can also apply a filter to show you specific types of data. The default shows you A records. Let's pick a more interesting data type, like the DNSSEC key record. Finally, you can also highlight nodes by name. For example, you can quickly highlight the entire org tree or the entire com tree, or just the DNSSEC tools.org subtree. These nodes are quickly brought to the forefront of the graph. That concludes our demonstration of the DNSSEC nodes application. DNSSEC nodes contains many more features that were not demonstrated in this video, so be sure to download it and check it out for yourself. You can download DNSSEC nodes or the source code for it from the dnssec-tools.org website. The version shown here was running on Linux, but it also works on Microsoft Windows and Mac OS X as well. We hope that DNSSEC nodes will prove to be a valuable tool in your DNS debugging arsenal.